Hi, I'm Katrina Blackwell, President of American Red Ball. We have prepared this training video to assist agents and drivers in providing the highest quality packing service we can. Our emphasis is on customer satisfaction in addition to actual packing techniques. While we have targeted military requirements and obtaining high customer survey scores, if you and your packing personnel consistently implement these practices on all shipments, we will achieve the level of quality that will bring you more success. Before we start, let's talk a little bit about performing the in-home survey so that your packing crews have the information they need to prepare for the job. Not only is it a requirement that a visual survey be performed, an accurate written survey is critical to preparing for the packing and moving process. Make sure your surveyor lists all packing material needed, all items to be moved, any special, fragile, or high value items, and list any special services needed, such as crating, front-loading washers, or shuttles. Performing the survey correctly and making arrangements for any special needs before the pack job and move date puts the customer at ease and places the packing crew in a position to perform a successful packing service. There are three parts to this training video. In part one, we'll talk about preparing for the pack job. Part two will be about packing day, arrival, introduction, and supervising the job. And in part three, we'll discuss packing techniques. Let's get started. I'm here with Debbie Britt, who owns a professional packing service. Having a satisfied customer begins with being prepared. Debbie, tell us how you prepare for the packing day. You know, Katrina, I always call my client the day before, introduce myself, and try to put them at ease. Confirm arrival time, directions, see if they have any questions. I explain my walkthrough process. Uh, once we get there, we're going to introduce our, our, our whole team. Uh, as we're doing a walkthrough, have them point out any special needs or high-valued items, any special services that the uh, survey requested. Ask about their schedule. Make sure the driveway is clear for the, the, the morning of so we can get our van as close as we can to the house. I confirm the survey information like mattress cartons. When you say mattress cartons, what do you mean by that? I just confirm what the surveyor indicated, uh, the size of the mattress cartons and how many. On the day of the move, what do you do to prepare? Well, we, once we get to the shop, we will get all of our paperwork and we'll go over any special instructions. We'll load up our, pack, our packing van with all of our packing material plus 20%. Last thing we want to do is to waste the customer's time or our time by running out of a few boxes. We want to go over our toolkit, post-it notes, screwdrivers, um, pliers, uh, markers, and then go over our directions and then call our client and let them know that we are actually heading out and that we will call them if we get run into any delays like traffic or whatsoever. How do you expect the crew to look? You know, professional image is so important to us. Uh, pro uniform is a must. Um, we do no body piercings, limited jewelry, and proper shoe attire. What rules do you have for the crew while at the customer's residence? Well, you know, Katrina, smile, be pleasant, address the customer with like Mr., Mrs., the rank, and no personal comments about their personal life or work-related comments, and don't comment on the customer's possessions. Ask the customer which restroom they want them to use. Don't ask for food or drinks. And when we do our break rules, you know, if we've got five or six people on the job, we just kind of split up in two teams. You know, half take a break and then the other half take a break. And that way we've got this continuous workflow going. And for goodness sakes, no smoking on the customer's uh, property, no cussing. And we try to keep an open communication going on with the uh, customer at all times. Upon arriving at the customer's residence, the vehicle is parked on the street to prevent damage to the customer's driveway. Dressing professionally, with clean shoes and well-groomed, makes the right first impression. Both will wipe their feet to avoid tracking dirt into the customer's home before ringing the doorbell. They have brought the toolkit that was discussed earlier. Debbie will now demonstrate how to introduce you and your crew to the customer and to do the walkthrough. Hi, I'm Debbie with American Red Ball. Hi, Debbie. This is Pam. Hi, nice to meet you. We're your packing crew for today. Great, come on in. Thank you. Before we get started on our walkthrough, would you like me to go ahead and put our booties on? 
Oh, no, that won't be necessary. Okay, first thing to get started is we'd like to do a complete walkthrough on the whole house. Okay. Point out each room to me and what you want us to label it, because we are very detailed on all of our cartons, room location, and contents. As we get to each room, if there's anything that's not going, point it out. Anything that stays with the house, because we've got post-it notes here for any high-valued items, um, you know, maybe anything you want us to actually pack last. We're going to try to do 99% of all the packing today, but we still want to leave you comfortable. So anything that you're going to need to get you through until in the morning, like maybe your bedding for you or the kids, we've got the big load last open first cartons okay. and big stickers that we're going to put on them. So once we get the walk through and so I'm ready to get started. Okay. Well, let me show you around. Sure. So now that you've introduced yourself and the crew, what's next? We do the walkthrough, and that's mostly just identifying all the sentimental items, items that's going to need special handling, identifying all the high-valued items, identifying personal valuables that should not be packed and have the customers secure them. And then we discuss how we like to mark the boxes for the new home, discuss some items that you can't pack, like aerosols, flammables, combustionables, and then mark the items with post-it notes that's not to be packed or uh, stays with the house. We will now demonstrate packing techniques beginning in the living room. Making a table out of cartons is a good alternative to using the customer's dining room table for packing. Let's listen to Debbie's instructions on how to assemble a table out of cartons. I'm going to go ahead and make a table so we don't have to pack on the dining room table. Set us a couple threes up. I always like to put one this way and then put one the other way. And it just secures it, makes it a little bit more firm. Alrighty. The customer pointed out a high value vase that needs special attention. Debbie uses brown paper padding since this provides better protection than basic newsprint. Paper is placed inside the vase to provide internal support. The paper padding is loosely wrapped around the vase and taped to hold the paper in place. Before placing the high value item inside the carton, Debbie lined the bottom with several layers of crumpled up sheets of paper for additional cushioning. After carefully placing the item in the center of the carton, she uses several more sheets of crumpled paper to surround the vase and fill the carton. Before closing the carton, Debbie adds additional layer of paper to ensure the carton is sturdy. When labeling the carton, it is important to note that the carton contains a high value item. When the movers arrive, this will help in identifying any cartons that need to be handled with special care. A high value security seal is placed across the top and bottom seam of the carton. The customer will sign and date this seal, and the seal numbers will be recorded on the high value inventory and household goods inventory for accurate tracking. Now that the job has begun, how do you manage the workflow and direct the crew? Well, you know, being a team leader, I know the, the skills of all my team. So like if someone's really good at China or the kitchens, that's where I'll put them. So what do you do with less skilled or new people? Well, our trainees, I always put them with the senior members or myself. And I encourage them to, you know, practice more on like books, toys, garages, stuff like this. But more important than anything uh, is, is not the quantity of what they get done that day, it's the quality. You know, our mission is to be claim free. You know, that's a good point. We've had customers who have complained, we're too fast, we're too slow. Yep. And, and the perception is we're not doing a good job. So how do you gauge that? Well, you know, I just try to even it out. If I know someone is, is more slower, I put them with someone, uh, like I kind of team them up with somebody that's a little more efficient, and it kind of evens out so it doesn't look. Because as long as they're going their own pace, main thing is no claims. How do you handle assigning someone to the master bedroom? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question, Katrina, because, you know, the master bedroom is always a, really off limits to a lot of the the team. They just don't feel very comfortable in there with just anybody going in there. So I put one of the senior members or myself it is important that books are packed in a 1.5 carton. The smaller carton weighs less when packed with books for ease of carrying. Typically, newsprint is not used to wrap books. 
but if a book is particularly delicate, it should be wrapped to prevent damage. Here, Debbie uses different sizes to fill the carton and places paper on top to fill empty spaces and to avoid shifting in transit. DVD collections are considered high value. When packing DVDs, each layer should be packed in the opposite direction and newsprint used to fill empty holes to prevent the carton from being crushed. A high value seal is placed on this carton and must be signed by the customer and dated. We've already placed the, the TV in here. We have these styrofoam pads here that come with it. And they come in different sizes. They have this uh, sticky back to them. So when you break them apart, you can just place them accordingly to the size of your TV. Let me show you how we uh, strap this down once we get the TV in here. Pam, can you show them how to put that other uh, strap on there? No. All right. Like I said, they're, they look a little confusing, but they're basically pretty simple. Okay, now let's go ahead and pull this up like this. There you go. See how strong that Velcro is? Pretty heavy duty on this, uh, on these straps. That way it holds that TV right in place. And you can feel pretty confident and secure. You just kind of close up the sides here and the top, like this right here, and then we're just going to tape it down real good. And then we'll do the top. There you go. Oh. A carton is prepared for the lampshade in the living room by lining the bottom with crumpled newsprint. You may use a medium or large carton depending on the size of the shade. Smaller shades may be nestled with larger shades as long as there is sufficient paper in between and around the shade. Do not pack any other items in the lampshade carton. It is American Red Ball's policy to keep the harp and finial attached to the shade when packing all lamps. Remove the light bulb and wrap it in newsprint. Marking an X on the bulb assures that this will not be mistaken for paper filler when unpacking. You can see the labeling on the box as arrows that point the direction in which the lamp carton should be placed on the trailer when loading. The labeling also clearly describes the lamp the shade belongs with. Lamp bases are often large and fragile, so it is best to use brown paper pads for better protection with crumpled newsprint in the bottom. Make sure to place the lamp upright when putting it in the carton. Other items may be packed with the lamp base if space allows. Always use the appropriate size carton based on the size and shape of the lamp. Bulky fragile items such as this silk tree should be packed in an open top wardrobe carton. First wrap the base of the tree with brown paper for protection and place in the bottom. Newsprint is used to keep the plant from shifting within the carton. All flaps on the wardrobe carton are then taped upright to cover as much of the tree as possible. Give me a hand. Let's pull the paper up a little bit around this right here. And let's just tape it. There you go, because that is like a glass vase. Let's see if that can get down in there. Oh, that is beautiful. Nice and easy. We want to make sure we put top load on the top and arrows pointing upward on three different sides of it. Now what we want to do is we want to keep this box set up in case we need it for whatever we're going to need throughout the rest of the house. Um, it's just a good sturdy table that we can use. We can actually, it's mobile, we can take it with us to the other rooms. I asked Renee if we could pack on top of the dining room table and she said it was perfectly all right as long as we use lots of padding. If you need to use the dining room table for packing, always ask the customer's permission first. Place a cloth pad on top of the table 
and cartons on top of the pad to protect from scratches or other damage. The following methods shown for packing fine china and crystal should be used for everyday plates and glasses stored in the kitchen as well. Plates are packed bundled together with paper completely separating each plate. Then wrap the entire bundle with another two layers of paper and secure. It is very important that the bundled plates are placed on edge in the carton. Platters and meat trays can be packed in the same manner as long as they are similar in shape. Only dish packs should be used when packing china, glassware, and crystal since they are thicker and have a higher bursting strength. Start with plates and platters on the edge in the bottom with crumpled paper to fill any gaps or holes and layering with small items. Crumpled paper is used to separate each layer. All cups, stemware, and glasses should be individually wrapped and placed bottom or stem side up in the upper layers. Fill any gaps with crumpled paper. When packing coffee cups, the paper is wrapped loosely around the handle to provide space between the cup and other items in the carton. Glass shelves may be wrapped and packed down the sides of the dish pack. Fill the top of the carton with paper before sealing. When fine silver is in its own tarnish resistant box, wrap the box completely in paper and tape so the box does not come open when being unpacked. Otherwise, wrap the silver in tarnish resistant paper, layering like items with paper in between. This will prevent scratching. Tape the bundle for ease in unpacking at destination. Mirror cartons are designed in four pieces to accommodate various sizes of pictures. Before placing the item in the mirror carton, make sure to fill the bottom with paper so that the item will not be sitting directly against the cardboard. Typically, framed or unframed art, mirrors, and small glass tabletops are packed in mirror cartons. The present demonstration shows the packing procedure for a framed painting with a protective front glass. If the painting is not protected by front glass, it should not be wrapped in brown paper as the paper may rub against the paint and damage the item. This type of painting may require crating. Before wrapping, Debbie notes the name of the picture. After placing in the carton, the two pieces are pushed together until snug. Label the carton with picture name or a description. When available, electronics should be packed in the original carton. Components to each device should all be packed in the same carton and individually wrapped. Use paper pads when wrapping computer equipment for additional protection. The computer is wrapped and secured with tape before placing on its stand and placing it in the carton that is lined with crumpled paper. The customer's perception of how well their equipment is packed is very important. Packing items that you may consider unbreakable without wrapping first may leave the impression that their possessions were just tossed into a carton without protection. Wrap similar items from the same area or drawer together. Wrap everything so the customer knows that every item is handled with the same care. The bonus is that items like pens and pencils don't end up loose in the carton. On military shipments, PPB&E or professional papers, books, and equipment are items that are used by the member in the performance of his or her job. These items must be packed and labeled separately from their household goods because the weight of these items is not included in the weight the member is allowed to ship at the government's expense. You know, you can never have enough paper. Uh, paper is your best friend through this whole process. And it's good to go ahead and get loose sheets and then wad them up and put them down in there. The main thing is with the pots and pans, you just don't want to have any noise. You don't have to wrap them really, really good but you just don't want to hear any rattling. And you want to make sure that you get the box completely full. Because a lot of times they use these 3.0s to, for foundation to stack on. It's so important to write on the side of the boxes because when the driver gets there and his helpers, they're going to stack all the boxes nice and neat in the rooms that it's marked. And if it's marked on top, you're not going to know what's in that carton. Some of our customers have complained about how the cartons are marked. Either they're mismarked, no marking, or they don't know what room they go back in. How do you mark your cartons? Well, first thing is you always put the client's name, top left-hand corner, CP for carrier packed, contract number. 
Then you put the room that you packed it out of, and you put the contents. What do you do if you have uh, items from two different rooms? Well, we don't do that. We keep each room separate, and we just fill it with paper. For the safe transportation of all household goods, certain items are not permitted, such as propane tanks, aerosol cans, combustibles, corrosives, explosives, flammable gases, and liquids. Prepare a carton with a do not load label for these items. Prepare a carton with a load last label for items such as paper towels and plates, coffee maker, bath tissue, and other items the customer will need up until they depart and immediately upon arrival at destination. For canned and unopened bottled goods, use the 1.5 carton. Gas containers should be wrapped in paper. Using a larger carton will make the carton too heavy. For lighter weight box goods, a medium carton may be used. Make sure any open boxes are taped shut before packing. For small appliances, mixing bowls and baking pans, use medium cartons or dish pack depending on the size and quantity of items. Heavier pieces such as electric griddles, waffle irons and electric pots should be wrapped in paper and packed on the bottom. As with all cartons, a layer of crushed paper should be placed in the bottom to provide a cushion. Generally, place these items on their side in the carton. This makes it easier to build layers when using crushed paper to fill any gaps or holes. Items such as glass mixing bowls or lightweight pans should be nested in groups, with at least two layers of paper in between and packed toward the top of the carton. Paper should be used between each layer and all gaps filled. Finish off the carton with a layer of paper. You always want to put a little bit of paper down. And a lot of these toys can just be placed in here. Well, if you know this is uh, one of the children's favorite toys, just out of respect, you just might want to go ahead and wrap it up a little bit and, uh, and put it in here. And then just start you another layer of toys. Main thing is you just don't want them to try to make too much noise when the driver is loading them. The driver always gets nervous if anything shakes, rattles, or rolls. So we like our boxes to be silent. While footwear is not typically breakable or fragile, it may be made of material or fabric that can be bent or scuffed. If possible, use the customer's original shoe boxes and place at the bottom of the carton. Any unboxed footwear should be packed in pairs and wrapped with paper, with one sheet of paper separating the pair to avoid scuffing. This also lets the customer know that care has been taken in packing. Wardrobes are used for garments on hangers. Place the bar across the center of the carton and hang the clothing just like it was in the closet. Wardrobe boxes should be full, but not overfilled, as this will cause wrinkling. Soft items and boxed or wrapped shoes may be packed in the bottom. Before packing dresser drawers, layer the bottom of the carton with paper. Starting with the bottom drawer and working upward, remove the contents and place in carton with a layer of paper between each. In this case, label the carton with master bedroom clothing dresser, right three drawers. Labeling in this fashion makes it much easier to unpack. When packing guns, make sure to wrap each gun individually and note the make, model, and serial number on the outside. Guns may be packed in wardrobes or other cartons. However, the labeling on the outside of the carton must not identify the guns inside. On the inventory, write the make, model, and serial number along with the inventory number of the carton in which the gun was packed. What do you do with the parts from disassembled items? We always set up a parts box. I mean, that's just mandatory on every job as soon as we get there. And we put in any hardware from any of the beds. We mark it accordingly. Any little hinges or remote controls that are loose, we put what TV they came from, what room they came from. So once we get to the destination, you have a parts box that's got everything you need in it. What do you do when the packing has been completed? 
We just want to make sure that we have bedding boxes in all the bedrooms for any last minute stuff that they need packed. Uh, want to ask the customer if there's anything else that we can do, uh, see if they have any more questions. Just make sure all the boxes are stacked nice and neat so that all the exits are accessible to get out if needed. I want to remove all debris, tools, make sure all of our packing material is loaded up, and make sure that we uh, remind them that they have an online survey. Uh, that they're going to be requested to fill out and how important that is to them. You know, Debbie, that is an excellent point. It's important to explain to the customer that you and your team want to earn an excellent rating. Ask them to complete the online survey. If they are a military customer, there is a link on the Red Ball website to the military survey site. The reason this is so important is that under the new program, the customer satisfaction with our service determines the future business, not only for American Red Ball, but for you as well. Thank you, Debbie, for your helpful guidelines. And thank you for taking the time to watch this video and for your interest in improving your packing and customer service skills. Satisfied customers and damage-free packing are essential to our mutual success in obtaining future business.